Hey, Cindy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, Rodney? Hey, I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. Well, to everyone today on Burn the Ship, we have Miss Cindy Nelson, <laughs> and she's with Nelson Elder Care Law, and uh, she's just going to share with us about herself and her journey and how she's gotten to different places. So, hey, without further ado, you know, how, how's it going? <laughs> Going very well. Good, good. So today, you know, you got over here, got a chance to spend some time with us. Um, you know, when we do these, we try to just find out your why, you know, mm -hmm. on what you do, you know, because you know your service is going to be excellent. But we try to dig down a little bit and say, hey, why is it that she got into doing this? And then that way, as you're sharing the message with everyone today, you know, they'll say not just the service, but this is her why, and that's why I want to work with her. So, so to get started, wh where are you from? Um, I was born in Chicago. Okay, awesome, yeah, awesome, Lincoln there. City. Mm -hmm. Nice, yeah, nice. So, yeah. you went to school there, and what happened? Tell us a little bit about your family and things like that. Yeah, yeah. and so um, I grew up in a Catholic neighborhood. My okay. parents were not good Catholics, though. Okay, so okay. we only had three children, but mm -hmm. everybody else, <laughs> everybody else around us had 12, 12. 13, oh, okay, 11, okay, okay, you know. Okay, okay. So okay. a lot of kids in the neighborhood. Awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah, and um, so I mean, I grew up in a pretty poor area. Mm -hmm, My parents. Mm -hmm. We're not well to do. Okay. Okay. Um, we lived in a trailer for mm -hmm. a big part of my life, and all right. um, my parents worked all the time, and nice. my dad always worked at least two jobs. So right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can hard see. working. <laughs> yeah, I see. So that can relate to you know what helped you to get there, seeing that hard work. You know, we all have our specific circumstances that we didn't right. choose to be into, but they helped us to get to where we are now. So I see the multiple jobs you saw I'm working helps you there. Yeah, when okay. I look at everything that's happened throughout my life, I feel like it's all because it was preparing me for what I do now. Okay, okay. Um, but so I went to college um, in central Illinois at a school called Millican University. Okay. And uh, when I came out of school, I had a IT degree. Okay. And so I went to work for Hewlett Packard. Okay, and Hewlett Packard. Now, and did you stay up north? Did it send you around the country? Tell us I, about that. I was actually in Rolling Meadows, which is a suburb of Chicago. Okay. Um, they had, that was... They were broken up into areas and regions at that point. This was the Midwest sales region. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was there for, I don't know, several years. And then they offered me an opportunity in Atlanta. I'd never been south, so I was a little okay. bit shaky okay. on that. Okay, you know? okay. <laughs> Us Yankees have, you know, hey, some listen, other I, ideas. Hey, I definitely understand. <laughs> I definitely understand. For and sure. um, so I was a little bit hesitant. Plus, mm -hmm. I was a single parent with two okay. young children and moving, you know, across okay. the country. If you don't mind, time frame wise, when was this? It was in the what time uh, early nineties. Okay, yeah, early, early 90s. 90s. Okay, okay. And um, so they were actually consolidating a lot of their processing and stuff mm -hmm. to the Atlanta area. So they offered me an opportunity, and once I came down here and saw how beautiful it was mm -hmm. and everything, I was mm -hmm. all in. So cool, cool. So you did that, and what were some of the responsibilities that you had when in those positions? Yep, so I was responsible for all of the human resource systems for the United States and South America Okay. for Hewlett-Packard. Okay, yeah. okay, so you had a lot of tasks going on with yeah. all of the employees there. Now, with Hewlett-Packard, was that the stop before we made a decision to help what we do now, or what was next after no. that? No. So um, I worked in a couple different large companies for IT. Okay. And um, did some outsourcing. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but there was no. one point in time where they decided that a lot of our technology jobs could be better served over in India or okay. other countries. Okay. Okay. And so one of my jobs was to really outsource all of the IT jobs over to India. Okay. okay. And um, I didn't really like that very mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I really loved my job, but I didn't like that aspect of it. Yeah. With, with that, was it just one of those things where the cost reduction was just that great is the reason why that took place? Was that the main reason why? Um, that was the premise. Okay. And I think that there was a lot of um, literature and a lot of studies that said that it was going to be cost beneficial. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it ever worked out that way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because when I think about how a lot of the jobs moved to different places, as a, you know, dealing with businesses all the time, I say, right. okay, it must be a, just a reduction in costs. Maybe like, 
if you're purchasing widgets from over there, it's going to be less of a cost. I would think the reason why would be because of that. But I wanted to ask since you were in that industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's pretty interesting because if you take a company like Hewlett Packard or I work for Home Depot too. Mm -hmm. And so you have people over there that are trying to um, develop and support the IT systems, Mm -hmm. but they don't have any idea of what life is like here. Okay. So they've never been in a Home Depot store in their lives. They Mm -hmm. can't even imagine what a Home Depot store is right right? right, right. and so you're asking them and they're very smart people Mm -hmm. but you're asking them to do things that are so unfamiliar that it actually takes quite a bit more resources Mm -hmm. and the time difference there's just a lot of challenges with it yeah it makes sense because you know you sharing that i think about analogy that i share is that it's easier for you to help you know sell a product if you know it oh yeah you know like if you get yourself immersed into that particular thing you may not know the correct sales techniques but you know what you're talking about right so it's easier to explain oh so i can see how the support would help raise the cost over there. Okay. Yeah, and then the, the time difference. And mm-hmm. I mean, we all know we've we've called some place that's outsourced it to some other country mm-hmm. and tried to talk to the people on the phone yeah, and, yeah, you know, nice. got caught up in a nightmare type of situation. Yeah, that is true. That <laughs> is so true. That is a true. A lot of things, I think, have come back since mm-hmm. that time. But, okay. Uh, well, so. that makes sense. Well, you know, I guess having that experience could have helped to make you look at things differently. What happened after that experience? Yeah, so I was getting a little disillusioned with IT at that point and mm-hmm. thinking about doing something different. But I will tell you, I never wanted to be a lawyer. That okay. was nowhere on okay. my radar. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, and actually, my younger brother was a lawyer, but mm-hmm. I still never wanted to do that. Okay. But my son always wanted to be a lawyer. Okay. And he had wanted to do that since he was, you know, school aged. Right. right. And very focused, never went any other way. It was just being mm-hmm. a lawyer. Okay. And so it was his college career when it was time for him to be studying for the LSAT test. Mm-hmm. And he really was not studying like he should be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> you know? Right, right. And he's um, super smart, and so he doesn't really know how to study. He's mm-hmm. never really had to study, yeah, right. yeah, which Tammy's... I can't relate to. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I said, always are those children that are out there that just have that and they don't have to. And like you said, now when it's coming time to, it's a habit that wasn't there. But Right. Okay. And so I was trying to encourage him to study. He wasn't really falling for it. Mm-hmm. And so I bet him that I could beat him on the LSAT test. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> see, that's, see that's, that's awesome to hear. Because like you said, what you're doing is just showing that strength of a parent to say, hey, listen, I'm gonna, I'll am i change it with you if you know to do it. So that's awesome to hear. That's why I ask because you know, people need to know yeah, why, why you founded stuff it. Stuff that comes out, I'm right? I'm telling you, right? That's awesome, though. That's awesome. Okay. And um, so we both went and took the LSAT test, and we did good. But I beat him by one point. Okay. Nice. I nice. know. That Poor away. guy. Hey, listen, you told him. You told <laughs> He's him. He's going to have to live with it for the rest of his right, life. Right, right. Well, <laughs> and, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> well, so then he says, do over. You know, okay. hey, bring it on again. Okay. And I'm like, okay, how'd, I don't have go? anything to lose, right? Yeah, all right. How'd it go? And uh, so we both improved our score, and I mm-hmm. beat him by one point. Awesome. I know. Awesome. So bad <laughs> for him. That's, right, right. Hey, it's Sweet okay. mom thing. Oh, yeah. Sweet mom oh, thing. Of course. Of course. <laughs> See, I told you. I yes. told you. <laughs> well, cool. So, um, so you both passed it at the same time. Did you guys start it at the same time? Or well, how, how so this was just the LSAT test, which okay. is to get into law school. Okay, to get in there. Okay. And so, um, law school started sending me free scholarships. Oh, I know. Nice. I'm like, I haven't been in IT for 25 years, you mm-hmm, know, and. Mm-hmm. Um, I really don't want to, like, go yeah. back to college. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I really don't want to be a lawyer. Okay. But um, I felt like there was just one that I, I couldn't pass up. My brother mm-hmm. lived in southern Illinois, mm-hmm. and he was raising his granddaughter by himself. Okay. And she was about five years old. And so when I got a free, you know, full boat scholarship there, mm-hmm. and my mom lives pretty close to there, and I haven't nice. lived in Illinois for over 20 years, and... I thought this is a sign from God. Yeah, I always yeah. tease that I need the two by four. You know, other people can get the little nudge mm-hmm. from God, but right, I need right, the two by right, four. Right, right. Like, well, I think this is the two yeah. by four. Well, good, good. Let's see. So, and, so you said okay. I'm, it sounds like you said okay. I'm going to go back up north, 
and then you went to school. How long did that process take for you? It's three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Did you do something during the time in school? You just focused on that? What What all happened? I did a lot of things while I was in school. So when I first went to law school, I could tell you every kind of law I did not want to practice and nothing that I wanted to practice. Okay. Okay. But um, I did feel like, you know, God had got me that far. He's going to lead me the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. And Um, On campus, they had a free elder law clinic for people 65 and over. Mm -hmm. So I went to volunteer there, and I knew right away. It's like, okay, this is why I'm here. Awesome. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Awesome. So I got really involved in that, but I also knew that you can't just do the academic part. You know, you've got Mm -hmm. to get some hands-on skills. So I worked with the area agencies on aging here in Georgia, Mm -hmm. um, one year, and so I was a representative down at the Capitol for seniors and different um, laws that they were implementing at the time, mm-hmm. and senior rights. Uh, I also worked for what's called the Long-Term Care Ombudsman, okay. which most people don't know about, but they represent people that are in nursing homes. They represent their rights in the nursing home. Okay. Okay. Um, so I so, just did a, so variety yeah, a variety of different thing. things to learn about it. Okay. Yeah. So that helped again with the foundation of it, but yes. to see that, okay, this is what I saw. I saw there was, you know, something I'm very interested in and that I want to help with. And you gravitated towards that and those different things that built you up over those three years. Um, after those three years were over, what, where did you go from there? Yeah. So I want to tell you the real clencher though that grabbed me about Mm -hmm. elder law Mm -hmm. and I think it comes back to uh, you know my whole family situation and probably a lot of people's is I discovered that many of us spend our whole life saving Mm -hmm. and we are planning for these golden years right Mm -hmm. we think that I don't know something miraculous is going to happen when we retire and we're going to have this pot of money that we've saved along the way, mm-hmm. where in reality, what I saw happening was most people become ill and they end up spending what they've saved their whole life on medical oh, costs okay. and mm-hmm. on care. Mm-hmm. And nobody saves the money so that they could pay it to the nursing home or someplace right. else. Right. You know, you don't pass up like this better model car <laughs> saying, well, I want to make sure I save a few thousand dollars so I mm-hmm. can spend it at the nursing home. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. for me, that was really what grabbed me okay. was that so many people are saving money and they have this vision, but in reality, that vision kind of blows up. Right. And there are ways that you can protect it, mm-hmm. but nobody seems to know about it. So right. when I learned that, I was like, Oh, my gosh, I've got to do this. Yeah, that's good because you can just tell how you wanted to share it. You know, it's like, hey, let me I found out this knowledge and let me go and share it with others because I can see how it can help to, like I said, just blow that dream up that you had. So, okay, well, cool. Cool. Again, a foundation. That's why I try to, you know, let people know what it is that's going on, because I've been around you for a while and you've (laughs) <laughs> been an excellent person, you know, to be around and oh, and share. And, you know, I got the chance to learn those things. And I'm even learning more today that <laughs> solidifies those things and just want, you know, everyone to know about it. So well, I definitely you. appreciate you sharing that, you know, your why of, you know, what got you to where you're going. So, you know, okay. So now... I think we're at school or getting out of school. No, so I graduated, and Mm -hmm. uh, that's when I worked down at the Capitol Mm -hmm. uh, lobbying for seniors. Mm -hmm. I worked for the Cobb County probate judge, so I was just gathering all of this hands-on knowledge. Okay. And uh, then I decided that I would open my own law practice. Okay, awesome. I didn't find any place that I wanted to work, and so Mm -hmm. I thought, Mm -hmm. you know, well, I'll just open my own firm. Okay. And um, so I did that in 2014, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. so we're, you know, on our seventh year now, and we have two different offices. We're actually getting ready to... We're in the process of moving our Woodstock office to a larger office okay. because we have outgrown it. So. Oh, that's magnificent to hear because, as you know, going through this past year, you know, it wasn't the same story no. for a lot, <laughs> you know, a lot of people. And another thing that, you know, I always like to share the positive part of it because it is so much negative out there if you allow it to there be. Is, yes. um, what What are some of those things during the time that allowed you to grow like that? What What would you say helped you? 
um, during the pandemic yeah, specifically. Yeah, that's yes. helping you move into the bigger office now, with <laughs> hiring people. Well, yes. the first thing we did is we're always focused on our clients. Okay. And um, I think we're known for our client services. Mm-hmm. We've gotten quite a few awards for the way that we interact with our clients. Mm-hmm. And um, it's always been that... I want us to treat our clients like it's a member of our family that we love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) And so when someone walks in the door, I want them to feel that love because they're usually going through a difficult time or they're contemplating difficult decisions. Okay. And so whenever COVID started and we had this shutdown, the first thing we did is we called all of our clients and people in our database just to say, are you okay? Mm Mm-hmm. Do you need anything? Mm-hmm. You know, because now you're sequestered to your house. Right. Do you need food and toilet paper? Right, <laughs> you know? right, right. Whatever it whatever is. Whatever it yes, is. Yes. And yes. so we, um, our database is quite large. So we called thousands of people. That's all the mm-hmm. team did was just mm-hmm. call people and see how you're doing and right. tell them if they needed something to give right. us a call back and right. we would be there. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I think that that type of thing is representative of what we do. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that um, were in assisted livings or in nursing homes, and so now all of a sudden they couldn't see anybody else. Correct. You know, they can't see their family, and that's devastating Mm -hmm. for all of us. Mm -hmm. But especially if you're ill, you're already, you're older, you're ill, so you're weak, Mm -hmm. and now you get isolated. That's right, yeah. That's awesome. That just extra level of care, you know, that you guys had brought value to what it is that you already do. Um, That's one thing we can relate to here, you know, Mm -hmm. as far as being on top of the communication, making sure everyone is fine, and then, you know, the target clients that you have that is exactly what they need at that time. So uh, that's a good share in in how, you know, it helped you to grow because what was it from there? Just referrals from people or or what happened? You know, it it really, so we created things for people to do while they're isolated in their rooms Mm -hmm. and we took them to the assisted livings and and that type of thing. Okay, okay. Um, So... I don't, I just feel like we've grown because we continue to do the right thing. Okay. And okay. try to take care of people. We have to make money to employ mm-hmm. everybody that mm-hmm. works for us, but That's right. we are not in it for the money. We That's never right. have been. Right. If you right. come in and we can't help you, mm-hmm. we don't charge you anything. We're going to tell you. Right. You know, hey Roderick, yeah. <laughs> you're set. You don't yeah. need us, yes, you yes. know. <laughs> Makes sense again. That's that value that value proposition. I've been saying it, you know, since the time, you know, I well, pandemic time I'm talking about, yeah. you know, and it's like if you bring value at this moment when it's just low for people, it's well, first of all, it's already abnormal for someone to care. I'm sorry. You know, that's just the way that it is. It's easier to be melancholy about it or just not care at all. But it takes a little bit of extra effort to care. And I said when people are hurting at their worst right now, not no, it's and it's because you don't know what's going to happen. What can we do to help them get through it and bring mm-hmm. value was the premise of it all. Right. So I can relate truly on, you know, that helping to build a business. Cause again, it started off as an idea in the kitchen <laughs> and now, you now know, it's a little it's different, a, studio. a little different, you know, a little different. So I definitely can uh, go with you on that value message. So yeah. again, thanks for sharing that. So now we're moving into a bigger office and, um, what, what are some of the, the things as far as with, others to keep an eye out for, you know, to send your way. I know you, you share with me the foundation of what it is you do, but mm-hmm. now like, you know, to share, Hey, what, um, you know, what does that referral or target, you know, look for you? Well, when we talk about elder law, most people don't know what that is. I mm-hmm. didn't know, you know, mm-hmm. until I stumbled across it as well. Mm-hmm. But I think that it turns a lot of people off because it has the word elder in it, which is just a type of law. Like you've got criminal law and you've got elder law. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But when you hear elder law, you think, you know, and even my mother is like, well, I'm not elderly. I don't right. need elder right. law. Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so I get it. But uh, what I would like everyone to know is that we work with all ages. Mm-hmm. And I think that we're at risk as husband and wife because we don't know the risk is there. Yeah. So okay. we don't understand that we can't do things for each other. Mm-hmm. And um, what does that mean? That means if my husband gets into a bad car accident, 
and he's incapacitated for a while, I can't like get money out of his 401k Mm -hmm. to pay for any care that he needs. Oh, so I'm blocked out if I don't. Okay. I can't sell our house because it's in both of our names if Mm -hmm. I can't afford it anymore. Okay. So we think that because we're married that everything is, you know, fair game, but it really isn't. Mm -hmm. Even if his cell phone is in his name, I can't cancel it. Okay. They, you know, won't even talk to me. Oh, that is true. That is (laughs) true. Yeah, they're like, who are you? And I don't care. Mm -hmm. His medical insurance wouldn't even talk to me. Mm -hmm. And so many of us, and this is where I say that I think that my life experiences have um, prepared me for this. Mm -hmm. I had a sister-in-law, we were the same age, at 51. She had a stroke and died. Okay. And, I mean, it was just boom, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she wasn't in bad health or anything. It just happened. Right. And who knew that that could happen? But mm-hmm. then you think, well, okay, that is just a one-off. You right, know, she right. was unlucky, something wasn't right, or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. But I started seeing other people in my life. Uh, my time. brother got in an accident, and he died. And, no. you know, it was just different things where I see what people were going through. Mm-hmm. And I thought, wow, I never really thought that would happen to me. Right, that's right. That's <laughs> I just always thought that's like, you know, somebody <laughs> yeah, else that's else, yeah. unlucky. That's right. But it started becoming more real to me as it was happening closer and closer. Mm-hmm. And I started looking at the ramifications of that that's right. and said, wow, I mean, people just don't know. Mm-hmm. So if you know and you don't do anything about it, then that's right. okay. That's right. You that's know, right. that's your decision. But if you don't know, you can't even make a decision. Mm-hmm. And so um, even... Even if, like, my husband passes away, because we have four kids, Mm -hmm. if we don't have a will, then it doesn't go just to me. It goes to me and the four kids. Well, my kids have not made a house payment. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Makes a lot of sense. I don't want to share the house with them. I understand. (laughs) I understand. But if you don't have it in place, there are just rules that are set that you have to follow that process. That's right. And I've heard, you know, some crazy stories where things have to go into the court system and all those types of things. And that's what you're helping to avoid. And it doesn't matter if you're elderly or not, you know, if you're in some sort of life situation, you could be assistance. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Well, that's great, you know, for you to share. One of the things that I also ask on top of that question is, yes, that's the person that you want to be referred to. Now that group of people that are out there that can be more of a direct uh, referral partner with you, you know, I want to ask, what does that look like for you? Who, do, what industry does that uh, work in, in favor of you? Yeah. So uh, we work with a lot of financial planners. Financial okay. planners have a relationship with their clients and it's a relationship of trust. Mm-hmm. And, and financial planners know that you need to get a plan together, not only for the finances, but also for your legal aspects. Okay. And so they're a good referral source for us. They mm-hmm. send people our way. Okay. Um, it seems like whenever somebody has paid somebody else for their expert services, they're mm-hmm. more likely to pay me right. for my expertise Makes instead sense. of wanting to go to like legal zoom mm-hmm. and, you know, do it themselves. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense, you know, because you know, we work with businesses all the time and we share with them, we want to help you to be on a solid foundation right. and it just highlights the business service we do if everything else is in order, you know, so I definitely understand once they pay for, one service, it's okay to pay for another because of the value that is brought, right. not just the price that is there. So, right. so that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so that's good um, for those types of referral partners. Um, you know, in here, we always have big thoughts, you know, mm-hmm. about, you know, what's on the cusp, what's next, you know, I know what you're doing is great right now. I've seen you do a lot of uh, <laughs> advertising. You know, you we know did. what what's on the um, cusp for you? What's next? You know, for Nelson Eldercare. Yeah, I feel like there's so many people that still don't know, and mm-hmm. we do a lot of education, mm-hmm. and so we're going to continue to educate. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the areas that I'm really passionate about is people that are caring for a loved one at home. Mm-hmm. Um, or in a, a facility, just being a caregiver is really strenuous. Mm-hmm. And um, so I recently published an article that uh, was about resources for caregivers. Mm-hmm. And I'm putting together a program that would help them. Okay. Okay. So, well, that's a good deal. Um, 
you know, again, just trying to let people know, you know, what's going on. Uh, you've been of great service to me, you know, Thank as you. far as just learning from you, you know, and being there. Um, what are some of the other things that us as a group here at the MB, uh, at the MP group and Burn the Ship can do to help you? Well, you guys have been great for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love your service and you. uh, a lot of what how we get paid is credit cards mm -hmm. and so you guys have done a great job processing that thank you uh, yeah. and so continue to provide me that mm -hmm. foundation okay we, we will do that of <laughs> yes. course we will do that i know you will but <laughs> i want to say i appreciate it yes yes we appreciate um, that. i i think it's more of an education thing you know okay. a lot of us are afraid to talk about what happens if we become incapacitated or what's going to happen if we die? Mm -hmm. So making some of those conversations more mainstream, it doesn't have to be that you sit down at the dinner table and say, well, okay, now if I die, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. it, we don't ever talk blood and guts and gory or mm -hmm. anything. We make it as easy as possible on our clients, but you have to start thinking about that because okay. if you don't, then the people around you are going to have some really tough decisions that they have to make quickly. That is true. That is true. It is it is definitely doing it for your what's what's after because you know it's not where we're not going to pass away. It's so tough to talk about it, but you know you being afraid of talking about it only hurts who you're leaving behind. That's right. So, the people you, know, you love. Yeah. So everyone out there, pay attention to that. That is true. It's hard for us to talk about it, but but it is true. Well, well, how can the people get in contact with me? How do you want them to best get in contact with right. you? Right, so they can give us a call. We mm -hmm. offer a complimentary consultation. We know that people don't want to come in and pay a lawyer before they understand what they're going to get. Mm -hmm. And so we offer where they can come in and talk to a member of our legal team in person or if they want to talk over a Zoom meeting or that mm -hmm. type of thing mm -hmm. uh, for about an hour, and it doesn't cost anything. Okay. And the other part of that is then we work on a flat rate. Mm -hmm. So it isn't an hourly billing that keeps escalating. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. going to know up front what it's going to cost. That's the cost. There isn't any more. Okay. Um, but they can give us a call at 678-250-9355. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Any other way? Any other social Website. Or and yeah, we're okay. on all over social media okay. with Facebook and okay. Instagram and LinkedIn and right. Twitter. Right. <laughs> Nelson Elder Care. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, of course, you know, this is all about you. I want to make <laughs> sure to give you the last word. Um, can you please just give us our parting shot? I think that for me, it's become so uh, visible that we live our lives every day just by happenstance. Mm -hmm. And we really need to have a plan to live our best life. Right. If you don't plan it, you're not going to do it. Whether mm -hmm. it's a bucket list or spending more time with your kids or with your spouse or whatever, you got to have a plan. Mm -hmm. So I would like people to just take a minute and think, do I have a plan? What is my plan? Right, <laughs> right. Because otherwise we get caught up in the day-to-day. -day. Awesome, awesome. What a wonderful way to lead us, leave us off. Uh, today we have Ms. Cindy Nelson <laughs> with Nelson Elder Care Law. We truly appreciate your time today. Oh, thank you for having me. What a, a, a real treat. I appreciate it. Awesome, awesome. Thanks again. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.